and, and listening to that and driving around a little bit last night and doing some errands. And, and you know what? Christmas is a great time. At least it's still politically correct to celebrate Christmas, I guess, as long as you don't say Christ. I don't know how you're supposed to do that. But, but man, make the most out of the Christmas season. Worship him. Oh, come let us adore him. It's not too early to start celebrating Christmas. Worship the Lord. Praise him. I was at the Bird football game on Friday night. Who's our Bird JV and varsity football players? These guys are awesome, man. They're coming out in force. And uh, they did a great job Thursday night and won. Friday night, they, 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 um, they, they, they did not win by as much as they could. I mean, the Manchester put a good fight. So God bless Manchester too. But um, I spent most of the night over with the Bird people because we were winning. Spent a little time with Chris over on the Manchester side, but got out of there as quick as I could. Um, but, but one of the church ladies I was with, I'll just say that, one of the wonderful church ladies I was with sitting beside me said, isn't it a shame that people don't cheer for God or get into church or come in great numbers and give this kind of accolades and this kind of praise and this kind of cheering for God? I thought, yeah, yeah, man, that's true. We'll cheer an ignorant football game. It's, and it's okay. It's fun. It's great for the kids to learn and compete and all that. But it's just a football game. And, and, and people give their lives to that, to some sport or some hobby. Or, listen, worship Jesus. Give him your heart, your soul, your mind. Sacrifice everything for him. Um, uh, Romans 12 uh, it says our lives are to be living sacrifices, wholly acceptable in him. It's our worship, reasonable act of service, but it's also translated our reasonable worship. When we serve him, we're worshiping him. When we worship him, we're really serving him. Worship him. Number three. So, so before we get number three, that just means sing, shout, cry, bow down, lift up your hands, um, cry out to God in worship. Number three, expect opposition because of him. Expect opposition because of him. Keep reading in the story. In fact, we just read it. You know what it says. It says that Judas was looking for an opportunity to betray him. Now think about this, folks. At the beginning of the chapter, the religious people were trying to kill him and arrest him. They are outside of his circle. They are, uh, and, and I'll just be real honest with you, the mainline denominations, most of the mainline denominations hate our guts, think we're ignorant, think we're ignorant backwoods people that need to get with it and catch up with the times. So that's outside, okay? The religious people wanted to arrest him and kill him. Judas was inside his circle. It was an inside job. And you can expect opposition both from without and from within. If you get a little more excited about God than your neighbor across the pew thinks you should, and it convicts them because he's lazy and he's apathetic, because that's what most of the church is, it's going to bother him or her. And you may get some opposition. Expect it from the outside and from the inside. Tonight, Pastor Derek and I are driving to Roanoke to go to the SBCV, Southern Baptist Conservatives of Virginia Homecoming. It's awesome. I wish some of you would go with us. If you want to go, you can stay in my room with me if you don't mind my snoring. Derek won't sleep in the same room with me anymore because I snore too much. But, um, but and as long as you don't snore too loud, you'll have to go with Derek if you snore too loud. But I wish someone would go with us. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be a fantastic ex experience worshiping God and, and hearing about what the SBCV, we have 600 churches now in the SBCV. It's growing. We're planting churches. People are getting saved. Thousands of people are getting baptized. If you want to get baptized, tell me today. I'll baptize you next Sunday. We're having a baptism service next Sunday. But, you know, this group is, is, is looked down on. This group is, 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 you know, we fit right in, right? But there's a lot of people that think we're nuts, there's a lot of people that say, oh, man, you take the Bible way too seriously. Why are you willing to sacrifice so much of your, of your money to plant new churches? Why are, why are you so stuck on the li literal interpretation of Scripture? Can't you just loosen up? Can't you just catch up with what's popular and what's, what's culturally relevant? Expect opposition. When you're betrayed, not if, when you're betrayed, when you are opposed, when you're hurt by someone you never dreamed would do it, don't quit. Just keep moving forward in spite of the opposition. Stephen Curtis Chapman on his new um, album has a song that says, just take another step, just take another step, just take another step, just keep moving forward. Don't give up, don't quit. We've all been hurt. I bet many of us drug in burdens today that are just overwhelming. And you're thinking, man, this is great what the preacher's talking about, and this is a great environment, good crowd. Thank you all for being here, and it's sweet and all that. And, but, but the truth is you're hurting, and you're distracted, and you've got other things. Don't quit. Just take another step. Ask God to help you 
to love those who hurt you. That's something I've thought a lot about lately because there's gonna be people that hurt us that, that we're gonna wanna go, put up your dukes. No, no, no. Our, spirit, our, our warfare is spiritual warfare, not physical. But make no mistake about it, there are strongholds and there are demonic forces. Satan hates your guts and he has millions of demons that wanna bring you down. We need to wake up and we need to understand we are opposed but not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord, you can win. You can overcome. Fourth and fifth, this is, this is the Lord's Supper. Let's prepare our hearts for the Lord's Supper. Number four, remember him. Number five, receive him. Remember him. This is the Passover in verses 12 and following. The Jews celebrated the Passover then, and they still to this day celebrate the Passover to remember God's deliverance of their ancestors from Egypt. When the death angel passed over, why did the death angel pass over? Because what? They put the blood of the lamb on the door and the death angel passed over them. We celebrate Christ in his pass, in, as the Passover lamb whose blood was shed on the doorpost of our hearts to rescue us from eternal death. We must never forget the price he paid to purchase our pardon. And, and um, I don't know, I, I just think of examples when people have done nice things for you. You remember that, don't you? When someone goes out of their way. I was broke down on the side of Route 5 in Waldorf heading to my job at Bob's Big Boy in my Chevy Chevette that I bought for $400. My father, I was well past the age of being corporately punished when I did that, but my father nearly beat me when I came home with this piece of junk, Chevy Chevette. And it didn't even get me to work that day. And I was about ready to cry, 18 years old, just trying to get my life going a little bit. A job, some college, some, and I'm on the side of the road going, this is not good. And I was 15 miles from home and 10 miles from work or something, a long way. I didn't know what to do other than just start walking down the road toward my job. And a man in a, uh, a Toyota pickup picked me up. And I didn't know him, and I didn't think he knew me, but... A year or two earlier, I had met him. He was in a gospel band, a, um, a black gospel band, and they let me jam with him one night on the guitar. And, I, and, I, and the name of the band was God's Choice. Awesome guys, awesome music, and uh, they let me play. And for some reason, he remembered me. 20 minutes from home, he stopped by me, stopped me, hey man, hop in. Do I know you? Yeah, you do. Play with God's joy. He took me to work that night, went out of his way. That's 22 years ago that happened. I remember it like it was yesterday because this guy went out of his way to put a guy in his truck, to take him to work, to help him, to kind of rescue him. He had nothing to gain from it, right? We remember things like that, don't we? I'm sure you could all tell stories where someone went out of their way to help you. Today as we come to Lord's Supper, let's just remember what the Lord Jesus Christ did to purchase our pardon. He did the biggest thing anybody could have ever done for you. Remember, don't forget, and receive him. Receive him. And, and when you look, look, look at the verses again, because we probably won't read all of this again in Lord's Supper. Look, look down at verse 22. And when they were eating, he took bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to them. He said, this take, this is my body. What's he saying? Receive it. Receive me. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he he gave it to them and they all drank of it and he gave it to them and, 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 and he said to them, this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I will not drink of it until, until the fruit of the vine, until that day when I drink it in, in, the, in the kingdom of God. The bread, the, un, or the unleavened bread, symbolized the severing of the Old Testament Jews from Egypt a severing from the sin in the world to a, a, a new life of godliness and holiness. Receive him today. He'll do that for you. He's the bread of life. Receive him. Receive him again as the Lord of your life and the one who sustains, sustains you and pro pro provides your needs, heals your diseases. Would you, would you just pray with me now? And, and we're gonna have an invitation a little different than normal. The band isn't coming up. Everybody's just gonna stay where they are. But, but, but bef before we do, go any further, I wanna ask you, have you ever received the bread of life? Has he, has he fed you? Has he saved you? And if not, would you just give your heart to Jesus today? The only qualification for taking the Lord's Supper here at Kingsland is that you're saved.
you receive this physical bread and this physical juice, it's, off, it's just a picture of what we've all done spiritually. We've received his forgiveness. We've received his blood washing away our sins. And uh, in a moment, we're going to listen to a song that talks about extravagant worship, breaking open that flask, that alabaster flask, and pouring that oil all over his feet. Thousands of dollars sacrificed for Jesus just, just, just to prepare him for his burial. He died for you, he died for me, and he rose from the grave. He loves you, he will save you if you will receive him. So right now I encourage you to pray and receive Christ into your life. Ask him to forgive you of your sins. Ask him to be your savior. And if you want someone to pray with you, come forward in just a moment during our invitation. I'll pray with you, our deacon will pray with you. Some, Derek, somebody will pray with you and show you how you can be born again. You may have a need in your life that you want someone to pray for you with or maybe want to join our church or come and request baptism. So, so next Sunday we'll baptize you. Our invitation is for you to do that. You're invited at this time to just remember him, to receive him. Even as a believer, receive him again as the Lord, the master, the one who sustains you and guides you and provides you and heals you and, 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 and receive him. Afresh. Every, every time we do this, we're, we're, we're remembering what he did and we're receiving him. Even though we've already received him, we're remembering that we received him. And in a sense, we're receiving him again afresh. Not that you could ever lose him. So right now I want you to hear this song. And this is our invitation. You can, um, you can remain seated during our, during our invitation song. And, um, but if you want to come forward for prayer, if you want to pray by yourself, come and do that. If you, want to, if you want to pray with me, come and do that now. Lord, I pray that you would help us to, to lavishly worship you. I pray that you would help us to, to, to give you worship beyond anything that, that, that we've ever given you before. It starts with receiving you. Lord, we're not going to be able to sacrifice a whole lot until we've received you and until we've worshipped you and, 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 and made you the Lord of our lives. So help us to do that today. I pray that you'd heal the one who needs healing. I pray that you would encourage the one that needs encouraging. Save the one who's lost. Bring that prodigal back home today. We worship you now. and come forward and prepare to distribute the elements. So lost for words will kiss your feet kiss your feet yeah So lost for 